Um, Al, real quick, I want to get our guest in on the line. He's pressed for time, and I want to get him in here because he, he's covered, especially the Raptors, uh, quite a take uh, on OG, on, on the deal, and uh, and ask a couple questions, man. He is Esfandiar Barahaney, formerly of Raptors Republic, uh, NBA reporter, and also a member of Pro Hoops Writers. Esfandiar, how you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I hope you guys are good as well. Yeah. I was just listening into the, the little bit of that show just now. Appreciate you guys having me on, man. Big day for uh, big day for both teams. Big day, big day, man. Um, I mean, from your perspective, what are the Knicks getting in OG Ananobi, man? How did you react to this trade? Man, I, I actually sort of agree with what both of you guys are saying in terms of it being a stepping stone into what the future of this team is. Uh, you look at the way the league is structured now, uh, and it, it, to, to your point, it's all about kind of taking those next steps, working and tinkering around the edges to be able to fine-tune your roster to make it make more sense. Uh, you know what you have in Jalen Brunson, star point guard, going to be an all-star, potentially going to be an all-NBA player. Randall has been good this year as well, maybe going to be an all-NBA player, potentially an all-star. And I think what, what you have is a foundation that makes a lot of sense towards building towards a contender. And you now have OG who – in my opinion, fits like a glove in terms of what that team needs. Um, I, I mean this with no disrespect whatsoever. Mm. What you guys wanted R.J. Barrett to be is what OG Ananobi actually is. Uh, and I, I mean that with the most respect because R.J. is obviously I, – I think what people expected, what people in New York expected out of R.J., that consistency as a 3 and D type of player, a guy who can guard multiple positions, a guy who can knock down shots when asked to – that is what you were getting in OG. Uh, throughout his career, he's been a consistent 38 to 40 percent shooter on high volume over five to six attempts over the last couple of years. Um, he's also a great defender. That's what he's most well known for. One of the most versatile defenders in the NBA, in my opinion, as far as him being able to guard multiple positions. We throw that label out very, very easily on certain players, the fact that they can guard multiple positions. OG, with his size, his strength, and his length, actually can guard multiple positions. Um, you know, there was a stretch last year where one night he's guarding Donovan Mitchell, one night he's guarding Joel Embiid, the other night he's guarding Jason Tatum. And I think that shows you the strength of what he can bring on the defensive end for this team. The Knicks have been awesome defensively this year. Obviously missing Mitchell Robinson this year is going to hurt them. But for the most part, I think if you look towards the future and assuming they that you guys resign OG, um, it's going to look really, really good defensively with this nucleus. And you're building something that I think inevitably at some point in time will help you take that next step into a contender. Uh, you want to jump in? Uh, so with, what do you see, what do you think of uh, the Raptors getting IQ and RJ for that team? Like, how do you see them moving forward? Like, do you see IQ being the starter and replacing Dennis Schroeder where do you see RJ sliding into the rotation for the Raptors? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think both those guys will end up being starters for this team. Um, I, it, I'm kind of – I'm interested to see the RJ proponent in this and how he fits into all this, to be honest with you, just because, you know, like he has been inconsistent in the shooting department and he's had seasons and stretches where he has shot the ball well and then he's had seasons and stretches where he hasn't shot the ball well. So depending on – you know, on any given night, he might be your starter and they need that floor spacing and shooting. But ultimately I, I kind of like just like his extra creation juice that he provides for this team, being able to get his own shot, get downhill, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think the big get for the Raptors here is quickly. I mean, they were so star deprived. They were so guard deprived, excuse me, that they just needed to get another guard in there. And, um, you know, I've probably had discussions with, with some of you guys on this as well. I know I've had it with a couple of other Knicks fans that, like, quickly is ready to become a budding star, in my opinion. He's ready to take that next step in his career. There just wasn't the minutes available for him in New York. And from a Knicks fan perspective, if you're looking at this and rationalizing, well, man, you know, quickly could have been a star in New York and OG, like, yes, he might help this team right now, but maybe we're letting go of a player who might end up being better in the future – um, you have to look at this from where the Raptors are, what direction they're headed, the opportunity that they're going to be able to give quickly, and the opportunity that OG is going to get in New York to help this team currently. In my opinion, I think it's a win-win off the face value of it. 
We'll see what they'll end up being in their careers. But for the most part, quickly needs that room to grow into whatever star he'll be. He'll get that opportunity in Toronto. Yeah, he absolutely does. And that's why I'm happy for both players, for RJ and his family to go home and for quickly to get an opportunity to shine. Um, You know, I I definitely like those players on this team. It's not not, not an easy trade, man. It's not an easy trade. I just felt like there was going to come a time where guys were going to get sacrificed, man. And and this, this was it. That this was it. Uh, um, yeah, you know yeah, what? Get, it's, get... it's funny you say. It's funny you say that it's not an easy trade because I actually think those are the types of trades that end up being pretty fair. Because from a Raptors perspective, you look at this and say, "Man, OG, he fits well next to Scotty Barnes. He's 26 years old. He's entering his so 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 on so prime. Like, obviously, he's a restricted, uh, unrestricted free agent. You got to pay the guy. But for the most part, it's it, you're you feel bad letting a guy like that go as well. Yeah. Uh, and he's been a huge part of this this franchise for the last, you know, five or six years. So it's tough. And I think that's what makes this sort of a fair trade, to be honest with you. What, what about with uh, what about with OG and and um, and the Raptors? You know, there there was talks that, you know, were, were they going to re-sign him to a new deal? Is Masai going to end up keeping him? Are they going to keep Siakam? And there was yeah. talks that, you know, he's a Masai guy. What, what did you make of the Raptors uh, moving him? Did you feel like that was an indication that he wasn't going to stay there long term? So, actually, I had a I had a friend of the podcast, Samson Folk. He's from Raptors Republic. Um, on the show, he mentioned that, you know, there was actually a deal in place last deadline between the Knicks and Raptors to potentially move OG and, and the Raptors balked on the offer. They decided to go a different direction. And, you know, here we are again a year later where that trade actually eventually goes down. Um, I think there were opportunities for them to move OG over this last year from multiple different places. Uh, Portland was a spot that came up for that third overall pick. You know, maybe they look back at that and say, hey, maybe we should have done that. Maybe they don't. Um, but there have been numerous kind of offers in place for OG over these last 12 months, they obviously thought that this one was maybe the best one. And um, to my knowledge, I think the reason the Raptors are doing this now is because they probably got an indication that OG wasn't going to be re-signing in Toronto. Uh, and, you know, maybe New York has a better chance of re-signing him. I imagine they did this trade because they, they yeah. feel confident in re-signing a guy like that. Yeah. Well, look, the this, this switch to CAA over the summer – here we go. Uh, a lot of Knicks fans have put their tinfoil yeah. hats on when that happened. And, you know, with the bad blood between the two teams and the lawsuit hanging, I didn't I didn't see this coming. I, I really didn't see it. But, hey, the CAA mafia comes through again and brings one of their own home. Spiders <laughs> up next. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Got a, I got a yeah, question about OG's I mean, injury I'm history. Because that's... I'm honestly excited for y'all. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just got a question. Like, so what do you think about OG's injury? Because OG's injury history, has he gotten over that? Because that's kind of been like, uh, uh, I guess, a stain on his playing career is that he's usually missed time due to some sort of ailment. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know what? To be honest with you, I, it's it's funny. If you go back and look at OG's injury history, it is some of the most ridiculous and nonsensical injuries that you'll see. He missed a couple of games this year because he cut his finger doing chores. Uh, there was <laughs> there was another time in which he had uh, his appendix burst in the playoffs. He's had issues with his eyes in terms of people poking him in the eye. So none of them are really issues that go back to the issues that he had in college, which was his knee. In college, it was mainly his knee issue that had him forced to be draft 20th overall to the Raptors. Um, that hasn't been a persistent issue, uh, if that's what you're asking. It hasn't been anything lower body that's consistently bothered him. It's really just been these weird, out-of-nowhere injuries that have made him miss time. And I think that's that's sort of part of what you get with a guy like him um, is, like, you get these, like, weirder injuries because he's so involved on the defensive end that he might, you know, get hurt uh, on a defensive play or, or try and extend himself too much on a defensive play. But, hey, I'm sure that's going to be something Knicks fans will love. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the injury history if I were you guys, to be honest. There, there we go, man. Well, as fan DR, we, we definitely appreciate you coming through in you know tight time window. Uh, hopefully we get to do this again a bit more thoroughly once once OG makes his debut and, and RJ and it quickly settle in in Toronto. Well, let's definitely do it again, man. Thanks for the time. 
Of course, man. Thank you guys for having me. All right. It. All right. Sounds good, man. Once again, that was uh, our guy, Esfandiar Barahaney. He's an NBA reporter, has covered the Raptors in depth. 